Oriflame has been around for many years, making people's lives better and helping to fulfill dreams. But was it always like this from the start? Well, somewhere in the past is the story of Oriflame. So, shall we explore it? Where does the name come from? Who created the logo? And who made this whole business possible? And why is it still important right now? Well, it all started in Sweden with a dream of two brothers and their friend. Let's hear the story. Hello, my name is Alexander Joknik. I'm part of the founding family of Oriflame and I'm currently the chairman of the board. Oriflame was founded in 1967 and at that time um, Sweden was uh, even smaller in population than it was today and it, it was not a very entrepreneurial friendly atmosphere in Sweden. So if you, if you were a business minded or, or you were dreaming about becoming an entrepreneur like uh, Robert and Jonas and their friend Ben, then you were very quick to focus outside Sweden. Every successful company needs to have a strong brand. And this often comes from powerful symbols. Creating feelings and emotions means a lot in business. So when the Afjofniks started their own company, they needed a name and this name needed to be powerful. And one of our earliest brand partners, her husband was a history teacher and he suggested to the founders why don't you call it Oriflam? After the French flag, the Oriflam. So sometimes people call it Oriflam, Oriflame. We call it Oriflame. But Oriflame was never meant to be just a Swedish company. The entrepreneurial vision of our founders went far beyond the borders of their home country. Soon, it was time for Oriflame to expand. During the next 10 years, I think we opened 30 countries. So it was an era of uh, fantastic expansion geographically, a lot of fantastic relationships being built with uh, fantastic brand partners across all these countries. But it was also combined with a continued expansion geographically into Asia. I mean, we were in Asia early, but then, you know, more countries in Asia and more countries in Latin America. So that's the history of Oriflame. But how is it today? What has changed over the years? And what's remained the same as it was during Jonas and Robert's early days? In any startup, any company, I think there is a dream of becoming as big as possible and being global. But over time, and especially now when the whole world is connected, it's important to uh, make sure that you build a strong company that is relevant to, of course, to the founders and their dreams, to the employees and their dreams, and to our brand partners and their dreams. And, and, and for it to be relevant for all of us, it needs to be relevant to the consumer. This is the key challenge for Oriflame, is to create a strong identity, a strong brand identity that can be uh, successful in all uh, geographies across the world. As you know, um, our mission is to fulfill dreams and, and it's an honest statement that we want to fulfill the dreams of our employees, large and small, and of our brand partners, large and small. I have met brand partners personally during the last 25 years in all countries around the world. And I have heard brand partners, partners to me saying, well, it's fantastic. Now I drink uh, apple juice in the morning instead of water. So that would be a small dream, <laughs> but it's still relevant. For others, it's about paying uh, uh, the bills at the end of the month. For others, it's about uh, paying the school for, for the children or creating uh, somewhere to live for their parents when they grow older. I would say for most of, of the brand partners, I mean, it's about traveling the world together and together with their families. And that, that makes me uh, um, very proud and it makes me very confident that what we do is relevant today 
and for the future. We are always very proud of Oriflame culture, but what did it look like at the beginning? Did Jonas and Robert create that as well? And in the early days of Oriflame, because they didn't have a lot of money to invest into Oriflame, they invested their time, but they also created a culture of, of course, working hard, but be being very creative. And what does it mean to be creative? It means to, to find a simple, cost-effective solutions that work. Maybe one of the most uh, important recruitment into Oriflame was Ingrid Lagergren. She joined as the um, sales manager in Sweden and uh, I remember her from all the years growing up because she was a, a big-hearted woman uh, traveling around Sweden, creating strong and honest bonds with our brand partners and our employees around Sweden. At that time, in the early 70s, you were not flying around in Sweden. You were traveling by car or by train. And when Ingrid uh, boarded the train, she immediately started to talk to everyone, creating a, a, a family atmosphere. Uh, normally, she got people singing. And when she arrived at the destination, she never stayed at a hotel. That was too expensive. She stayed at the home of our brand partners. And that was how close um, the bond and the connection was between the management and the brand partners and the founders already from the start. A lot of time has passed since the beginning of Oriflame. Eventually, our founding fathers had to move on and become less involved with the company. Fortunately, another generation of Afjofniks came to pick up the torch. Today, one of them, Robert's son Alexander, continues to develop and expand Oriflame as chairman of the board. It was 1999. In the beginning of the dot-com or in the middle of you know, the, the first online or dot-com or computer era. And it was such an interesting concept. What does this mean for Oriflame? And that was actually how my entry into Oriflame started, that uh, together with uh, Robert and then uh, Sven Matson, who, who was the CEO at that time, we, uh, I, I got a project to evaluate how Oriflame could work with, with our digital platform. And then I was hooked. <laughs> My most recent Oriflame moment was the Gold Conference here in Stockholm, less than three years ago before the pandemic. We had, a, for example, we had a big carnival in the very center of Oriflame with uh, more than 20 nationalities. And we did a march through the center of, of, of Stockholm. And I wish all of you could have been there to experience it. Otherwise, you can probably find it online. <laughs> <laughs> I love to work in Oriflame. <laughs> So uh, I, I uh, warmly uh, welcome uh, great people to join Oriflame. It's, uh, it's a fantastic place to be. And this is Oriflame.